Uh, greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Digital Age Expo Virtual Exhibition and Business Show. My name is Francis. And I'll be your client's relationship manager and host. And we are live on YouTube. I hate to say that today is going to be our last day, but we will definitely be back. So stay tuned. And today we are going to have seven amazing speakers that are, that are expert to what they do. They will give us and teach us interesting and significant topics that we will surely get some value. So without further ado, I'll now introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is a data scientist at the Tesseract Academy with more than 10 years of experience. He has also helped many people follow a career in data science and technology. He's also a book author named The Decision Maker and is going to discuss the importance of data strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Stalianos Kampakis. Hi, Van. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, today, today's talk uh, is about the importance of data strategy. Um, so thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm a data scientist and I've spent most of my career working with decision makers from companies of all sizes, from startups to big corporates. But most of my clients have been startups and scale-ups in the technology space. Uh, I'm based in the UK, uh, but I've also done business in the US, Germany, and a few other countries. Uh, so today's talk is going to be very relevant for those of you who are in the space of entrepreneurship, uh, who are in companies that are scaling up, but I think also bigger organizations that are handling data and are thinking of using data science will find this very useful. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, to start with, uh, with a story yeah, in order to, to demonstrate why data strategy is important and why, and hopefully these stories will also help you understand why data strategies is probably the fastest growing field in the data space right now. So a few years ago, I uh, got approached by a famous uh, startup in, in the London scene. And this startup was essentially a job board. So you could, uh, yeah, you could go there and you could see all the different ads from different startups um, around uh, you know, them looking for software developers, data scientists, product managers, that sort of thing. So International Women's Day was coming and uh, they wanted to run a piece uh, on identifying the differences in salary between men and women. Yeah, so they wanted to write an article about this. And that's very easy to do, right? So they all, all, all we had to do was to simply uh, get the data and then run a statistical investigation uh, and compare uh, the differences in salary between male and female, right? So there's nothing uh, special here. And honestly, I thought this was going to be less than a day's worth of work. However, things were more complicated than I expected. Uh, much to my surprise, the platform was not recording gender as a variable. And what this meant is that what should have been a very easy project to do suddenly was nearly impossible. We had to find a solution. And what was the solution? The solution was to go into the emails of the different users, extract the name, and then get many, many different name registries for many different countries, and try to identify whether the person or this user was a male or a female. This is more difficult to, to do than, you know, than, than we thought it would be, simply because many names are unisex. Um, London is also very multicultural, and there were some, and some names that we couldn't really identify where they're from. And long story short, we ended up throwing one third of the data. So a, a, day, a job that should have been a one day thing ended up being a one month nightmare. And the reason was essentially the lack of data strategy. Yeah. So as you understand, uh, the gender is a very important variable for any business to consumer startup. Yeah. However, they weren't, the, the owner of this company wasn't thoughtful enough to try and, and record this. And it wasn't thoughtful enough to ask someone as to the kinds of data that he should be recording. 
Yeah, and this is a mistake that came to haunt them two, three years down the line. So I like to say that failing to plan is planning to fail. And data strategy is a very good example of that. Now let's move on to another case study. So uh, this one concerns a prominent football club uh, that I had a chance to work with 10 years ago. So the goal of this football club was to use the data they had in order to predict injuries before they take place. And they had many different departments. They had a medical department, a football training, weight training coach. Um, and its department had its own uh, data sets, and these were not integrated. So people were storing and recording data manually in Excel. There were also many other dysfunctions. For example, there was not much communication between departments. A player might come back into football training after an injury, but might not notify the medical department. There were conflicting goals. The medical department wanted to protect the player, but the coach wanted the players back into play. And there were no established procedures for data standardization and data entry. So this means that there was no transparency in the data and the data was dirty, which led to wasted time and wrong conclusions that were drawn and many months of wasted work. There was a learning curve of about a year to try and identify what we can or we can't do with this data. And essentially, the quality of this data was much worse than we expected. And we ended up spending around two years in order to set up the right culture and the right processes instead of really analyzing the data and delivering what we're supposed to do. In this case, the mistake was obviously a lack of data strategy, which was clearly related to a lack of data-driven culture. Yeah, and you can see here a very nice graph that shows how all these different bubbles intersect. So on one hand, you have design. On the other hand, you have analysis on this thing. You have the uh, narrative, yeah? Uh, when you get the when you combine the analysis with the narrative, you get an interpretation. When you combine the analysis with the design, you get clarity. And when you uh, combine the design with the narrative, you get storytelling. And when you have all three, you get data literacy. And this is what really most companies should aspire to do. So why am I sharing all the stories? As I mentioned at the beginning, I really believe in data strategy and the importance of data strategy, especially for smaller organizations. And I assume that if you're listening to this, you're either an entrepreneur, a startup or a scale-up or a manager in a big organization. In any of these cases, you will need to use data science in the future. You might be collecting data or you're thinking to collect data. And data is a new oil, right? This is what everyone's been saying. So it's very likely that you're deferring decisions about data strategy into the future, or you think you can hire some data scientists down the line to fix it for you, yeah? And usually none of those things work well as we saw. And here's another very short case study. Uh, again, this comes from my personal experience of a company that hired a data scientist and then the data scientist resigned after two months because the data was not ready and there was no clear goal as to what the data scientist should be doing. So it's clear that you also need to be ready for a data for, for data science before you really hire a data scientist. But the thing is that data science is everywhere, right? And AI is everywhere. So you see some, some metrics here. The average data science salary in London is very high. It goes all the way to above $200,000, uh, sorry, pounds, which is like $300,000. Uh, there are many, um, Start, there are many bubbles, as you see here, which show the size of the AI sector in different countries, and these are spreading in more and more countries. And also funding in AI startups is growing and growing. Yeah. And so where I'm going with this is that I believe that the I believe that data and AI have the power to transform whole industries. Right. But unfortunately, most companies they're not really doing data science the right way. And this is what, the reason that I decided to start the Test Service Academy. I've seen the same things play out a thousand times, professionals repeating the same mistakes and trying to find the same solutions, right? Like going to expensive consultants, um, which like to take a long time to, to deliver, hiring expensive data scientists. And in the, in the meantime, losing immense value, which they could have gained should there have been a plan in place. So why am I eligible to talk about this thing? So I've been in this area for a long time. As uh, our friend said in the introduction, I've also written up a book on that topic, The Decision Maker's Handbook to Data Science. If anyone wants to send me an email, just Google my name and you can find my website and my email. I'm more than happy to share a free copy, PDF copy of my book with you. If you're interested in this topic, if you are a leader, an entrepreneur, decision maker, 
and I've worked with companies of all sizes and I'm working with also some academic institutions the likes of UCL, London Business School and Jets Business School. Yeah. And I created the Tesseract Academy and I use this name because Tesseract really refers to the four pillars of data science, right? If Tesseract is a four dimensional cube and I think that proper data science implementation needs to have those four dimensions, which are AI, machine learning, statistics and business understanding. And data science brings all these things together into a coherent whole in order to deliver value to an organization. So what do we do? The, the idea behind the Tesseract Academy is that we help you design and implement the perfect data strategy, whether you're an entrepreneur with no data or whether you're a startup or a big corporate. And this can mean a few different things. This can mean education, creating a strategy, identifying whom to hire, improving a business plan, or using some of our unique tools to improve efficiency. Yeah, and here are some stories of people that have worked with us. So these are some of the entrepreneurs that have worked with the Tesseract Academy. All these are startup founders, but they've also worked with some bigger organizations such as British Land, Vodafone, the US Navy, but also universities. So there are many free things that we do with the Tesseract Academy. We have many free tools, many free frameworks, many free events. So if you go on this link here, uh, or if you just go on our website and you go to free tools, you'll find some free frameworks which can help you with, uh, with your data strategy, can help you better understand how to hire data scientists, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that was it for me. And uh, I'm open to questions. Uh, I mean, this was a short talk, talk. So if anyone has any questions around data science uh, or data strategy, even if they are outside of the scope of this presentation, I'm way more than happy to, to answer them.